does this new system replace for me the need to utilize very expensive gear such as a full frame camera and a bunch of lenses? The short answer is no, but there are some caveats to that. And the reason I say no is because <laughs> iPhone season. Either love it or you hate it. Personally, it depends on the year. But this year, this guy, very exciting. So if you're into photography and videography, the first couple weeks of September are generally pretty exciting. That's because iPhone season. So this is the new iPhone 13 mini. I just got it in the mail yesterday. Very excited to give it a try. Everybody's been buzzing about the new cinematic mode. So I wanted to go ahead and put it to the test to see if it's gonna make this guy, my Sony a7C, which is a full frame $1,800 body with some very expensive lenses, if it's gonna make this obsolete. Who knows? From what I've seen in some of the test footage, it really might surprise us. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so now we've got the side-by-side -side comparison. I've got the iPhone 13 mini footage right here and I've got the A7C footage right here. So I'll throw them up both side by side so that you can look at them, but from first impressions, this iPhone footage looks absolutely incredible. The one difference that you'll notice is that I have my Sony A7C set to an F1.8 aperture versus the iPhone mini is set at an F2.0 aperture. Now on the iPhone mini, it is computational photography. So you will notice in some settings that there's sort of a halo effect that's being created because it's AI trying to blur out the background behind you and focus on the subject. You're gonna notice that it's a little bit more smooth and clear on the Sony a7C, but overall there's not that big of a difference between the, the two types of footage, which is absolutely unbelievable considering that one is a phone with a very small sensor and one is a full frame camera with a very large sensor. And now the next test that I wanna show is how both cameras can actually adjust to focusing on a subject versus focusing on a person. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold up the iPhone mini case right in front of me and you'll see that the Sony a7C adjusts as does the iPhone and then when you pull it back down, it will adjust back. So I'll do that one more time just so we can get a look at it. But as you can see, both systems actually rack focus pretty smoothly. There's a little bit of a difference between the way that it does it on the iPhone mini versus the way that it does it on the a7C, but nonetheless, they're both very good looking and without a trained eye, you really wouldn't notice a difference. They both look very clean and very professional. And then another example I wanna show you guys is what rack focusing manually between two subjects looks like on the Sony a7C system versus what it looks like when you're using the touchscreen on the iPhone and choosing which subject you want in focus. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two plants on the table here and I'll show you first the Sony a7C footage. So I've got two plants here. I got one in the foreground, I got one in the background. So I'm gonna focus first on the one in the foreground and then I'm gonna manually rack the focus back to the one in the background and then I'm gonna manually rack it back. So you can see just how smooth that is and you're gonna notice that it looks very familiar compared to what you've seen in cinema. So now I wanna throw the iPhone 13 footage on here so same exact setup, same exact settings. I'm gonna go ahead and first focus on the first plant in the foreground, so I'll click here on the touch screen, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on the one in the background. As you can see, it racks focus very nicely. And then I'm gonna go back to the foreground and back to the background one more time. Now I'll throw both of these up side by side so you can watch it simultaneously. And as you can see, they both look really, really good. As I said before, only a really trained eye is gonna notice the difference. So that's what's so exciting about the fact that they added this to a consumer device that's really accessible to everybody. So after going through all these tests and looking at th this example footage, I feel like I can really give my honest opinion of what my initial reaction is to this footage. And it's just, wow. It's unbelievable that we can get this type of footage out of a phone that is that accessible to the average consumer it really starts to level the playing field of what filmmaking really is. And let's call a spade a spade, filmmaking is a bit of an elitist game. Traditionally, you've needed a lot of gear and a lot of very expensive gear to produce very high quality looking videos. But now that we can get this type of footage out of a phone system, it's really starting to level the playing field on who can be a filmmaker and who can create professional looking videos. Now, my biggest caveat to this entire new system is the fact that the fundamentals and lighting are still the most important pieces of filmmaking. Don't think that just because you've got cinematic mode, you're gonna get an image that looks like this. 
I spent 30 minutes setting up these lights and I have three lights that are fairly expensive. I've got one key light right here in front of me, which is a Godox SL100. And then I've got two Godoxes behind me. So I've got the one that's lighting the background. And I've also got one up top that's acting as my hair light and rim light. So that's why you're getting such a crisp cinematic looking image. If I take both of these cameras, regardless if it's the Sony A7C or the iPhone mini, if I take either one of these cameras into a crappy setting like my kitchen, and I'll show you some example footage of what really bad lighting looks like, even with this new system that's revolutionary, it still looks like garbage. You have to pay attention to what the fundamentals are and make sure that you understand how to create a cool and cinematic looking image before you can expect to get really good looking results out of this new iPhone system. So now with that out of the way, I wanna get down to what is the main point of this video and why I decided to make it. Does this new system replace, for me, the need to utilize very expensive gear, such as a full frame camera and a bunch of lenses? The short answer is no, but there are some caveats to that. And the reason I say no is because this technology in the iPhone is still very young. As I've said a couple of times, you can still tell that it's artificial if you've got a trained eye such as myself. And I still find that even these files aren't quite as good as I would want them to be to be able to manipulate the footage. Now the iPhone 13 Pro does have some features to be able to shoot in ProRes, but even that has some of its limitations as well. So some of the biggest limitations with the iPhone mini, and this goes for the Pro as well, this cinematic mode only allows you to go to 1080p at 30 frames a second. Now you can shoot in other modes on the phone still, you can still shoot 4K 60 and Full HD 240, but you don't get that shallow depth of field and you don't have the ability to edit it and manipulate it and you don't get to utilize the cool style that we love so much in the iPhone 13. So that for me is still one of the biggest drawbacks. If they can get to the point where in these phones you can do 4K 60 with shallow depth of field and the shallow depth of field starts to look even just a little bit better and you get the full HD 240 with shallow depth of field, the game's over. There will be such an advantage to carrying around just a phone as opposed to a whole bunch of very heavy and expensive camera gear, there will start to be a cost benefit analysis that goes into whether or not you should be shooting on a phone versus shooting on a camera. Camera gear is really expensive and you have to carry around, it's heavy. There's all kinds of things that you need to get really good looking footage out of these types of cameras. Versus if the footage out of an iPhone ends up looking just as good, the convenience factor of just having to carry around that phone really starts to tip the scale. Now there will always be a need for these really high level cameras for when you're shooting really high quality productions, such as commercials, TV shows, full length feature films, things like that will always need to utilize these very expensive large cameras. But for even sort of the lower end professional that might just do some content creation for TikTok or Instagram, there will no longer be a need for them to utilize these larger camera sets and more expensive camera sets. You will be able to get great looking footage that for those types of smaller platforms, nobody will be able to tell the difference. And that will be the tipping point at which people start to just start to utilize phones as opposed to utilizing cameras. But for now, at least for me, I will be continuing to use my cameras for all the work that I do. Although I will be pulling out my phone quite a bit more often because I feel like I can trust this footage more than I could out of my 10s. So with that, I'm still really excited about what is coming out of this iPhone 13 mini. And I'm really excited for the future of what they're gonna be putting into phones and the overall innovation that they're gonna be putting into these things over the next three to five years. I think that overall, it's a really cool time to be a content creator and be into filmmaking or photography. The level of innovation from companies like Sony and Apple is really starting to push the bar in terms of giving us the tools to be as creative as we want to and placing the only limits on what we put out on our own imaginations. But that's where I'm gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Does this iPhone 13 mini or Pro change your mind on whether or not you'd be investing in more camera gear in the future or if you're just gonna flat out get, start getting rid of all your stuff because you see the writing on the wall that these things are gonna be replacing cameras here in the near future. But nonetheless, thanks for watching. I hope you guys got something out of the video. Please like and subscribe while you're down there. I got a ton more content coming your way every single week around filmmaking and photography. And if you haven't already, check me out on social media. I got my company page, kh.imaging, and I got my own personal pages that I'm just starting called The Kyle Harry's on both TikTok and Instagram. I'll drop all the links in the description and over here on the side for you as well. So check out a lot more of that content and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.